Good morning and welcome to my morning rant. I hope you guys had a wonderful, wonderful Christmas that you got a chance to celebrate with your family and that you got some of those material needs met. And I know that um, God is always here with us and that uh, hopefully you guys got a chance to truly spend some time with your family because there's nothing like the gift of time. And so I want to talk to you guys about this uh, little phrase in Matthew 20. 2820. Lo, I am with you always. I remember um, one time I was um, singing this song, and I know uh, Christians, you know, we get so emotionally moved when we uh, connect with a song. And this song is Come By Ya. And I remember as a young kid uh, singing this song and belting it from the bottom of my heart, from the deepest of my being and you know how we get the tears coming down my eyes and my hands are up in church one day and crying and singing come by ya my lord and the holy spirit stopped me and said what madness are you talking he says what do you mean come by he says i am in you i am with you always jesus makes a statement um lo i am with you always and when you sing is come by ya it makes you think because you're going through your your hard times that he's not there and we seem to have this thing in our mind that he's only there when the good times are there. Well, I beg to differ. He's there when everything is there because he tells us he's even closer to the brokenhearted. Not like you're not going to get your heart break, broken because you and I, we make some decisions outside uh, and apart from God, um, you know, uh, uh, nudging. And as a result, we will have our heart broken. And he said he's even closer to us than when we are in that state because he sees the pain and understands where we are at because the Bible says that Jesus Christ is our high priest and he understands every single thing that you're going through. He knows about loneliness. He knows about separation. He knows about uh, being abandoned. Um, he had to go through all of that while he was on the cross when his father separated from him. He knows about suffering. Uh, he knows about not having enough money to buy things and get things. Things, but he showed us how to do it, how to get it. Peter came to him and said, hey, uh, we don't have enough money to pay the taxes. And Jesus said, well, uh, go down to the to the river and the, this fish is going to bring this up for you and then take that money and um, go pay the taxes. And when you think about that story, I know a lot of us just uh, gloss over it and, and uh, go to the next uh, uh, verse or whatever. Stop for a minute and use your logic. He turns to, Peter comes to him logically, you know, simple situation. Hey, we, uh, the funds are low, man. Um, people are not giving that much and uh, we are kind of behind, you know, with our responsibility that we have to take care of. We got to pay these taxes. And Jesus looks around and he says to him, yeah, I know. I'll tell you what you're going to do. Go down to the fish, to the river. This fish is going to come up and he's going to have some coins in his mouth. And then he's going to drop it on the shore and gives it to you. And you take that and then you go pay the taxes. Now, if it was you and I, we would look at him and say, hey, what are you talking about? Going, But, you know, here is the fate of this man, Peter, that he went down. And he is probably waiting there a couple of minutes, you know, and the thoughts are coming into his head. What am I doing here? Um, but the master said, I need to wait here because there's this fish that is down there looking for the money to bring it up for me. So it takes fate to uh, do the ridiculous, but within the ridiculous is your answer. So um, uh, faith and belief has nothing to do with normal stuff because uh, we saw in the first scene when Jesus said, take this water and then pour it into these glasses. The fate of those servants to take water and pour it into glasses with their stranger, their boss, and their, their master. And imagine um, the fear that could have entered into them because had they poured water and it was just water, the master would have been, um, who knows what he would have done. To them. But anyway, Jesus is with you always. God is with you always. He's not just there part-time, meaning when the times are tough, he's gone um, and leaves you alone. So you have to go through it on your own. And then, you know, you cry unto him, oh, don't forsake me. 
um, the Bible tells us different. Joshua 1, 8, uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 5 it says, I will be with you. I will not leave you or I will not forsake you. I'm there with you. Whatever you're going through, I'm going through with you. I'm here for you to tap into, to get wisdom. You need wisdom. I have that, and I'll give it to you freely. Um, what is it you need? Because the Bible tells us God has truly given to us all things pertaining to life and godliness. So it's how you and I access it. And we access it, the Bible tells us, as our soul prospers. We educate the soul as to who God is. And uh, he begins to believe it. Revelation becomes real to him. He then accepts it, the agreement with your spirit man, and you are walking in faith. And you get what you're asking. So Deuteronomy 31, 8. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or he will not forsake you. Don't be afraid or be dismayed. He is actually in it with you. Even though you walk through the fire, I am there. You will not get burned. If you walk through the river, the water is not going to overflow you. Probably because he has us in his hand. And he's walking there with us. As I mentioned, he says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not leave you, nor will I forsake you. And this is promises to you and I as well, as it was given to Joshua. Because Jesus was the one that says, I am with you always. He made a promise with us. The agreement was that he will come and he will die. He will pay for our sins. This is the agreement before the foundation of the earth. And one of the agreement was that the Holy Spirit will come and indwell us. If you look at the old covenant, the covenant, many of those men and women had to wait until the Holy Spirit came upon them. But this new covenant of grace, he is in us. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews 13, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently, confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. What? He can torture me, destroy the body, but he has to answer to my God who can destroy both body and soul in hell. And so he is destroying my body, but me, the individual who I am, the house he's burning and doing all those things. But the inside man is alive and well, and God is with me. He will never leave me nor forsake me. Just as he says to Joshua in one nine, Joshua one nine, have I not commanded you be strong and be courageous? Do not be frightened with these people, or do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And that's one of the things that you and I have to come to grips in. When I was backsliding, God was going with me wherever I go. He didn't vacate my body and left me to my um, to my vices. The Holy Spirit is there with me, and and as I. Uh, begin to turn my way back to God and, I, and as this becomes more and more real and I pray that it becomes real in your life that the Holy Spirit is in us and then we would have to be very mindful that he's here. That means that we would have to learn how to control our speech be because he has empowered us to have self-control that tells us in the scripture and uh, if you read that it's all about personal growth and personal development i believe and um, it's the process by which one moves forward and that is seen in the book of peter when he talks about um, uh, tribulation work of patient and patient all these different things uh, we know that uh, um, paul talks about it peter talks about it but i want to talk to you guys Wherever you are, God is with you. Wherever you are going, whatever you are doing, when you're lying, He's there. He's you're, he, He's inside of you. When you're you're cussing, He is there. When you're in sin, He is there. He is at front seat based on you because He has made a commitment to you, and He said, "I will be with you wherever you go." So you and I need to be mindful of that scripture. And then start behaving accordingly. 
with the knowledge that the Holy Spirit lives in you and that he is and you and I are the temple of God, the temple of the Holy Spirit. And uh, as being the temple of God, we would want to behave as such. So I want to let you guys know that God is our helper and you can confidently say the Lord is my helper. And because he is, I'm not going to be afraid of what people say to me or do to me because I, the spirit man, the soul man, I have a relationship with my father, with my God. And so he tells us that he will never leave us nor forsake us because he has made a covenant to us. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And so God is there and Jesus is there with you. He promises that he will be in your mess and on in your pain. He is there for you. He doesn't vacate the scene and then when you call on him, he will answer. He is there in you waiting for you to call on him. And so when you do, he can immediately respond to you as he did with Peter when Peter was on, when Peter was walking to him. And so we see, I think Peter got pretty close to Jesus and then he he panicked, he still panicked. So, um, and if you look at that whole scenario, it is the walk of faith. Um, When the situation changed, most of the time fear come in and we began to panic. But Jesus said, call on me. Why? Because he's here within us. The Holy Spirit is there in us. The word is also in us because it tells us, your word have I hid in my heart so that I may not sin against you. So we have all these powerful uh, uh, relationships and, uh, you know, that are dwelling within us. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the word, um, uh, all of these things. And so you and I have access to power. It is simply we cannot allow fear and unbelief and our crazy living in the flesh um, deny us the access to the power. And so I want to remind you guys, man, it is what? Uh, December 27th, as I said, I've been through so much in the last couple of years where I almost died. Um, uh, I was in the hospital for several days in the ICU. Even there, God was with me because I believe because he was there, I'm alive today. Um, I have traveled many countries and uh, were in many situations with uh, my family and all this thing, and God was there. I have needs and stuff like that, and God was there. He has never left me, and it is my hope that I would grow closer and closer to Him as He reveals more about who He is. I realize and learn the deepness of His affection towards me and the confidence that He has in me because I am His workmanship. And so He's working something beautiful. He sees something beautiful and he's working with you and I, and he has chosen us before the foundation of the earth. So yes, you are beautiful. You're so much beautiful and so beautiful that God is working on you. He's taken the time to invest in you. He knows the hair on your head. He knows all of your needs. He knows all of these desires. He knows you. The Bible tells us that he knows us intimately. He knows the reason why we make the decision based on the the thought that enter into our hearts. So he knows you and he makes a promise to you. I will never leave you, nor will I ever, ever, ever uh, separate from you because I am part of you. I am nowhere far out of your sight where you you panicking. I'm, I you know, feel as if God has left you. He is there. He promises. He says, I am going to go wherever you go. So I just want to let you guys know God is with you, man. And whatever lifestyle that you're in, you're dragging him along with it. And so you need to be mindful of that and begin to make your correction as the Holy Spirit empowers you and make real and that you have access to forgiveness whereby you can come and through forgiveness you can restore your relationship with your God who has loved you before the foundation of the earth. So I want to mention this again, Isaiah 41, 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I am your Adonai. I will strengthen you. I will help you. 
I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's what he has promised to you and I, even though and even when we go through our hard times. Remember Isaiah 41.10. Memorize it. Drop it into your spirit. For when those times come, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I am your personal Adonai. I will strengthen you. I promise that I will help you. I promise that I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That, guys, is who our Father, who our Lord Jesus is. And he said in his scriptures, Lo, I am with you always. The Bible tells us that the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight.